Hello, it's James from X-Robots. This is part two of building my BB-9e droid from the new Star Wars film. You saw this in last week's video with Colin Furs and his life-size TIE fighter, so don't forget to check that video out. This video is sponsored by eBay, and all the items used to build this droid were bought only from eBay. Last time I left you with the head stick and some of the internal mechanics, so we're gonna pick the build up there. So there's my head stick and it can move all around in all directions. It's got two degrees of freedom and of course the magnets on top rotate. So now we just need some servos in there to move that all around. And this is what's gonna control the head stick. So we've got two servos with big servo horns on and they've got these metal sort of ball joint things on that can move all around. On the head stick, we're gonna have this and we're gonna set up a triangle that allows the servos to move this. So if they both push forward, it pushes forward. If they both pull backwards, it pulls backwards. And if one pulls forwards and one pulls backwards, it moves the head side to side or any combination thereof. So I've moved on a bit here and made the main head dolly. And as with my previous BB-8, this has little casters with Ninja Flex wheels and it has a rotating magnet thing in the middle. And that means the head can rotate without this whole thing having to rotate. And as you can see, the magnets are pretty strong. So the ball is much thinner this time because it's only those 3D prints. There's no skin on the outside. So it may even be that it's too strong. So we may have to winch those magnets back, but we can adjust everything with some nuts that are in there. And of course we can slide the magnet back inside on that 2020. So now hopefully you can see the head control arm there that's got that rotating servo on and that's quite free to move around and I've put the servos on brackets on the 2020 extrusion there so obviously they can move sideways by one pushing and pulling and they can move forward and backwards by both of them pushing or pulling. And if I operate that rotational servo in the middle there then that hopefully you can see is rotating the magnetic plate and this piece of studding the head shell will be attached to but not the whole plate with all the wheels. So let's look at some electronics. So I've got an Arduino Mega here and this time I've got a shield on top um, and that's got like a proto board development area so I can basically build all of the circuits on here. Then we can have headers and connectors like these that go off to the various pieces to make it more modular. I've got the inertial measurement unit here which is an MPU 6050. That's paired up with another Arduino Pro Mini and that's gonna sit somewhere in the robot and again we'll have a connector that comes off here and comes onto this board here rather than loads of trailing bits of wire and all sorts of things it'll all be nice and modular we need to measure the rotation of the side to side axis so i've got a pot mounted on a thing here that fits on the 2020 and that piece fits on that central axis on that piece of 2020 and that will measure the position so we can basically turn that side to side axis into a big servo and i've got a box of loads of things in that i got off ebay so loads of wire We've got some voltage displays, a spare Arduino, some motor drivers and some nice switches and things and all these things that we'll pull out as we put the electronics in. For the remote control I'm going to use one of these normal RC sets but we're actually going to take the electronics out and put some custom electronics in. So I've taken out the original electronics that look like this and I've put in my own which consists of an Arduino Pro Mini, a Bluetooth HCO5 module and a little board there for power distribution. And this means I can read all of the sticks and all of the switches and send digital data straight over the wire. And this is currently powered from USB, so on the back I have a USB boost adapter and I can plug that in and that should power everything up. I could use the battery compartment and a regulator, but of course this means I can power it off anything that's a USB power supply if I need to. So here's my Arduino, I've added a few things to that shield. We've got the receiving Bluetooth module, we've also got the IMU attached with a cable. So the plan is all the motor drivers and everything will be on cables that plug into sockets. And that means I can take this out to work on it without loads of wires soldered directly to it. And so far I can turn on the motor enable with this switch which turns that LED on but that will enable all the motor drivers. So I'm using Bill Porter's easy transfer library to go and get that data and take it over Bluetooth as if it's a transparent link. So uh, basically I'm just reading all of that and writing it out to the serial terminal and this is the Arduino serial plotter. So we can see basically as I move the sticks uh, we can see that data moves and um, basically it's pretty responsive. Uh, so is the IMU, if I were to tilt that around you can see the uh, two wiggly lines there as I'm measuring the angle into axis. So that seems to be working pretty well and it's pretty responsive. Now I'm running the Arduino, the main one here, at 50 hertz, so it's running 50 times a second. And both the transmitter and the IMU are running at 25 times a second. But I could of course go and up that to double that at 50, 50 and 100. So we also need to fit to that board connectors for these cables from the motor drivers and these fit onto the 2020 and they fit back to back and one has the power switch. We also need some regulators and another power switch for the servo power because they need six volts and we need to fit our pod assembly with a connector onto there 
and then fit it all into the ball with some power distribution. So in one side we've got a motor driver and there's one in the other side as well. And in the other side you can just about see that red breakout board. So we've got the Arduino fixed on that side. And on the other side we've got some power supplies and things which regulate the power for the servos. And everything there has got power switches, I've got a little display that reads out the voltage of the batteries. Now the initial measurement unit's really hard to see but it's actually just here where my hand is. And that's measuring pan and tilt of the robot so we can keep it stable. So now I have my head under control from the transmitter. So this is moving forwards and moving backwards. And that's both servos moving together. And if I move left and right, one will push and one will pull. And that moves the head stick all around. So I've got quite a good range of motion there. I can also rotate the middle there which will actually be the head turning action and of course that leaves the dolly still or free to do what it wants so that it can move around freely and the head shell will sit outside this dolly. So the main drive for the robot is driven by the other stick on the transmitter and that's actually trying to set an angle which is measured by the um, inertial measurement unit. So if I push this forwards and backwards we should see it actually try and hold an angle that I set and you should see the head stick follow it as well so that's using the inertial measurement unit as well to try and actually push the head in the direction that I'm driving. But of course if it's not on its base then when I push that stick it will cause it to roll along and it will adjust that motor speed 50 times a second to try and hold that angle so we get um, a kind of uniform drive out of it. And you can see the head stick there moving in the direction I'm travelling. So I can also lean to steer by moving those side to side axis which is basically the thing with the batteries on and I also put some packs of lead on to give it a bit more mass. But that is also dynamically stable so if I were to go and manually lean the robot you should be able to see those tracking. Um, and this actually keeps it stable and stops it picking up a wobble side to side. So if I were to turn that stability in the motors off and give this a shove obviously it rolls around all over the place. And if I turn the motors on and do the same thing it should try and stabilise itself to stop that repeated wobble. And obviously we can tune this up for different floor surfaces. The carpet in here is pretty soft. Eventually it's going to drive on grass. But on a smooth floor we'd need to make that more aggressive. So it's actually pretty quick if I just thrash that down to the other end. And obviously I can just switch the head back and come back the other way. And that's not even top speed. I don't think I can get up to top speed in here. Now my turning circle diameter is about 8 feet, but I can actually make some quite tight turns. Still practicing driving here. Let's just try a three-point turn. So that's not too bad. So here we are on a smooth floor. It actually uh, seems to run okay, actually. There's a bit more side wobble side to side, but it's actually quite a lot more responsive than it was on the spongy carpet. I'm kind of okay with that. Let's just try and do that three-point turn. Yeah, not too bad at all. So eventually the droid needs to drive on parkland and the grass is a bit lumpy so I didn't bother cutting my grass this year or doing anything to the garden. It's completely overgrown, there's lots of thickets, uh, lumps and bumps and lots of divots because the ground is pretty poor state anyway. So uh, the droid seems to work alright. Obviously if it does hit a bump it is going to wobble but in fact it will sort of stabilise and it's pretty easy to steer. It definitely has enough traction but I'm not sure what happened if I try to drive on sand. So I'm pretty happy with the way it runs. There's quite a lot of tuning to do in software, including getting rid of that head jitter and a few things we'll need to do as we build up the mass for the head. And that's the next thing we need to make. Here's the head design. I've put some of the features on which are actually on the droid and some of the things are going to be stuck on afterwards. So it's got the eye detail and holes for LEDs, but most of the other panels are actually missing. So if we take the top off, we can see the dolly sits nicely in there. And if we remove some of the other parts, we can see that there's clearance there. So the whole head shell turns around the outside of that dolly. And here it is, so it's made in three pieces. If we take the top off, 
obviously the lid comes off so we can access electronics and things inside and then the two halves are stuck together with tabs now i had to cut the top of the tabs off because they were a bit long to make it a snug fit but that means i can put that on the bottom then put this on the top and then we can still get the dolly out if we need to. So it obviously does have quite a lot of build lines on as well as the details that we actually want. So I'm going to need to do some finishing on that. But then I'm going to stick extra panels on over the top and that should make up some of the other detail. So it seems to be about the right size. I just need to make the triangle thing that fits in here and holds it onto the piece of studding so it rotates when the magnets do. Obviously it'll sit slightly higher so there's some clearance but it looks about the right size. So now this triangle piece is fitted, we can see that that actually turns with the head and the wheels stay stationary, which means there's less drag on that motor. I've also added an audio board and amp and a speaker either side. So it's a few days later and I've done quite a lot of work to the head. So it's all been sanded and painted multiple times to try and make it as glossy as possible. I've made inlays with uh, aluminium tape there. And I've also made the top with the aerials, which are actually into 3D printed Ninja Flex blocks, so they pull out easily, and if the head falls off, they don't break. But I'm pretty happy with that. It's not totally perfect, but um, I'm pretty happy with the gloss that we've got there. And what does the Porg think? Porg thinks it's okay. So I fitted some electronics in the head there that make the logic lights flash, and they also make the eye flash every time the logic lights have flashed three times. And that's just using an Arduino, a voltage regulator, and a little LiPo to power the NeoPixels. Now the head is on, I've had to do something to the stabilisation, so instead of that side-to-side -side axis moving with the motion, it moves in the opposite way. And that works quite well to actively pull the droid back on, and that's basically because of the extra head mass. So it seems to drive alright now, on the carpet at least, and I can throw it around quite a bit. Whoops, the head's held on pretty well now. I've lowered those magnets as well. So it should stabilise itself pretty quickly, even if I bump into things, hopefully. Yep, head's still on. Now in the end of course I have to drive on rough ground so the power's turned up pretty much so that it can actually get any traction so I'm not sure how the smooth floor is going to do now. Yeah not too bad I guess if I go slow enough. Not totally keen though although I'm driving less recklessly than I was on the carpet of course. But if I'm careful enough and yeah, that's not too bad, I guess. Yeah, this ground's pretty lumpy. It's kind of averagely flat. There are a few lumps and bumps in it. Obviously the droid can drive on it, but it's still going to go left and right over the bumps. So I've printed some side panels for the robot, and these were printed on support material, so there's a lot of scaffold under there which snaps away to leave a nice panel. So I've done that with the middle grille part as well, which of course fits neatly in there. And it drops all the way through at the moment, so we need to make some mountings. Alright, so how does that look? I've actually painted this grille silver, but it now is actually held in, so if I pull it out, Oh, there we go. We've actually got a magnet in there and that fits onto a bolt head that I've screwed into the aluminium extrusion. And the main outside panel here has got a little bit of bungee cord. You can maybe just see there if I grab it, which is just elasticing that on. So now that will come out and there's another piece of the other side too. So that should hold itself on quite nicely. Obviously the bungee cord just springs it in and means it won't pop off on any bumps.
And here it is all finished, so don't forget to check out last week's video to see it in action with Colin Furze's life-size TIE Fighter, and thanks again to eBay for making this video happen. Alright, that's all for now.